I'm a former visa officer, and how do you overcome a prior refusal? Well, what is a prior refusal? A prior refusal means that your visa has been refused in the past. That doesn't matter how long it's been, it doesn't matter where that happened. If your visa has been refused in the past, you have a prior refusal on your record, and it's going to affect your future applications. That prior refusal, even if it happened in a different country, in a different consulate, it follows you, right? Many people think that that record will expire. There's a statute of limitations and you get a fresh start. That's not the case. They think that if they change the location, change the country, maybe they get a fresh start. That's not the case either. These electronic records will follow you everywhere and the visa officer, when they open your case, will know that you've been refused previously. Now, why does this affect your case negatively? Well, it's because a visa officer will see that a colleague of theirs with the exact same credentials, the same training, hired for the same job, interviewed you, analyzed your situation, and made the determination that you did not qualify for the visa. This means that they are going to presuppose, they're going to assume that they will make the same decision. This is every visa officer starts from that point that if someone has a prior refusal, it's most likely that they will be refusing that visa again. The managers want to encourage this as well by ensuring consistency across the board. They don't want for someone to come in and get one decision from one visa officer and get a different decision from a different visa officer. They want it to be consistent across the board, normed across every officer. And so the visa officer's base level is that they are going to apply the same decision to someone that their colleague already did. So you're starting off from a negative position. Now, how do you change their thinking and get them to change from negative to positive? Well, I can tell you what you should not do. What you definitely should not do is whatever you did in the first interview. If you have been refused previously, do not go into your next interview thinking that all you have to do is try again, roll the dice, and maybe the visa officer will be in a better mood and issue you your visa. That's not the way this works. So many people think that it's chance, that, oh, well, the visa officer was in a bad mood, so if I go a different day, maybe they will uh, they will have had a better lunch and they'll be in a better mood and issue me my visa. That's not how it works. Also, it's not based on a quota. It's not that, oh, the day's quota was filled and so you need to try another day when there's, there's visas to, to be issued. That's not how it works either. I know that you're gonna find a lot of information that talks about these types of myths online. That's not the way it is. If the visa officer believes that you qualify for the visa, they are going to issue you that visa. There's no quota for the day for that visa type. You can get your visa issued, but you need to have the right strategy, which is changing it from what you went in previously and were refused. So you go in with a new strategy. What should that strategy entail? The first thing is that it needs to be something different, of course. The second thing that applies to everyone is that you need to, to be ready at the very beginning of the interview to put your highlights your advantages in front of the visa officer. So even though they know that you've been refused, they're hearing positive highlights from your application, from your resume, that are going to lead them to question that previous decision. Huh, I see that he's been refused before, but what he's telling me sounds like good information that would lead me to issue a visa. That's the thought that you want to have in their mind as, as soon as possible from when the interview starts. So. These highlights, as you know from watching many of our other videos, they can be almost anything. They can be professional, they can be academic, they can be financial, they can be familial. It can have to do with your previous travels. You need to be able to identify what your highlights are and then be able to quickly and clearly communicate those highlights to the visa officer as soon as possible after the visa interview starts. When does the visa interview start? It starts as soon as you walk up to the window. There's no preliminary period where they're asking simple questions. You should just reply simply, and then the interview will start. They're never going to say, please tell me what you would like to tell me today. They're going to say, what's your purpose of travel? That's the beginning of the interview. That's when you need to bring your highlights out and make sure that the visa officer knows what those highlights are, okay? That's the only way you're going to get over that presumption that the previous refusal was correct and that they're just going to reiterate that with another refusal, okay? There's one other thing that you need to keep in mind. 
Many times the visa officer is going to ask you the question, what has changed since your previous refusal? This is a question that can land you in hot water, that could end up getting you refused very quickly if you answer it incorrectly. The reason they're asking this question is because of the reasons I've already laid out here, which is that you've already been refused by an officer with the same training, applying the same standards. If nothing has changed in your situation, then this new officer should make the same decision. So when they ask you that question, if you say nothing has changed, you're giving them permission, authorization, full credibility to say nothing has changed, previous decision stands, refused, 214B. So what do you need to do instead when they ask you this question? Well, if something has changed, something material has changed, highlight that. If you're applying to one university and then you've gotten into a much better university, highlight that. If you were refused last year and you had one job, now this year you have a new job with a better salary, highlight that. What you shouldn't do is say that nothing has changed and you should not say that something has changed but it's a menial insignificant change. Oh, uh, the name of the hotel that I'm going to stay at in the US has changed. This is not a material change. This, this change does not affect their thinking about your eligibility for the visa. So don't, don't highlight some insignificant change. Highlight a real change if there has been one. But let's consider the situation where there is no real change that you have been refused, it's two weeks later, and you're trying to get your visa issued with the same resume, the same purpose of travel, the same job, the same travel history, all the data is the same. How should you then answer that question? Well, I would propose that instead of saying nothing has changed, I, I propose that what you should do is say, well, actually, I don't know why I was refused last time, because, and then state your greatest highlight, because, uh, my parents have always had U.S. visas and traveled to the U.S. without a problem. I've got copies of them right here, um, and so uh, you know I, I'd like to show them to you. I don't know why I was refused before. If that's your biggest highlight, whatever your biggest highlight is, that's what you need to pull out then as ammunition. Because even though you haven't answered their question directly, has something changed? No. What you've done is you've presented a highlight to them that they can't get out of their mind. Right? They can't, they can't ignore that you've presented positive evidence that supports issuing the visa. Now, they may not like that you haven't answered the question directly. They may ask again. You need to stick to, to presenting those highlights though, because answering that nothing has changed is going to do nothing but speed up a refusal. The highlights, the highlights of your application are what are going to get your visa issued. Stick to those highlights when you go in after a prior refusal and that's how you're going to get your visa issued.